What's up everybody? Welcome back to Superpower Reviews. My name is Liam Smith. Today we're taking a look at the brand new just released 1-6 scale Sideshow Collectibles Harley Quinn. Wanna play? And first thing, let's take a look at the box. First thing you see is an illustration of the statue as well as some abstract artwork on the front. Not much to see on the side of the box, pretty much the same artwork as the front. Flipping around to the back of the box, have a photo of the statue itself. And there is something interesting on the inside of the box. There's some unique artwork that you don't usually see on the inside lid of a box. I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, now taking the lid off the box, this is the packaging inside. Just like Sideshow Collectibles always does, they use the clamshell style packaging. It is packaged really well. There's two levels to this package I'll show you in just a moment. And I do want to mention, I did not get the exclusive version that has the additional unhooded head sculpt. I actually did not care for that head sculpt very much. So I went ahead and waited on that one. I'm going to make this a Project Harley where I have this classic sculpt. And I'll also be able to purchase the Suicide Squad head sculpt separately, swap them out that way. Okay, so I mentioned the artwork inside of the box. It's actually kind of unique. It's on the inside lid of the box. I actually think they should have put this on the outside of the box. There's some really great animations from the animated series. Basically some artwork directly from the comics. Now as I mentioned, this is a double tiered package. As you remove the bottom, which I already took out, you do have the very large Harley Quinn mallet, as well as her infamous bat. A couple extra sets of hands here, and just a plain black base. Okay, so I've got Harley Quinn out of the box and on her stand. Now I gotta say, First thing before I go over the details, I normally don't do this, but I have to point out some immediate flaws I noticed. As soon as I pulled it out of the box, her head was tilted down like this in the box and actually stuck to her collar, which actually scraped the paint off of her collar, which you can see right here. I'll give you a close up on that. So you can see that right there. The paint is completely scraped off the collar because her chin was pushed down into the paint like that and scraped it right off. So the next thing I'll mention is the base. I'm very underwhelmed with this base. It's very basic. I know that Sideshow does this sometimes to put the focus on the character itself, but this is just a really cheap hollow plastic with a very cheap hollow stand that just pushes into it. I would have expected for 200 plus dollars to get a slightly better stand that maybe had some theme to it. This is a very generic stand that could be used on any character. And the final flaw that I noticed immediately was the bat. The bat is completely warped. It is bent this way. I did notice it's not a hard PVC. It is slightly flexible. I'm able to bend it right here. I don't know if I'll be able to bend it back into shape. I don't want to bend it too much. But again, quality control should have caught all these things before it was shipped out. You can see as I spin the bat there just how warped that is. Now there is the possibility of being able to straighten it out with a blow dryer heating it up, trying to straighten it, let it cool down. But again, the point is you shouldn't have to do that on a $200 plus dollar figure from Sideshow Collectibles. A high-end company like Sideshow, this should not be happening. And now moving on to an accessory that I'm really impressed with is her mallet. It has a really great faux wood look to it, the faux metal with the rivets, and the handle is actually metal. That's impressive too, to keep things like what happened with the bat from happening. Something like this, a long handle would have warped very easily. Again, a lot of quality into the mallet, not so much into the bat. And the final accessories here are the additional hands. On the figure already are the two closed fist hands. Then you have the additional hands that are grip hands for the mallet. Have the two open hands in red and black and the one red pointing finger hand. If you've already ordered this, you probably already know, they've upgraded the bodies substantially. They used to use the hard plastic jointed bodies. Now they're using the seamless TB League bodies, otherwise known as Fison. And these are the silicone bodies. You can see it has the flexibility to it and no joints, which in this case with the outfit that she wears, it doesn't matter too much for the joints, but people that have had jointed plastic bodies before, even with outfits on, you could still see the joints and the hard edges underneath the outfits. And this makes it much better and gives it more realism, especially when you start moving the joints around. All right, so let's start with the head sculpt. Now, like I said, I did not get the exclusive version because I was not a fan of the unhooded version. So we'll take a look at this classic head sculpt here. Now they definitely gave her kind of a unique look to her face. It's not your typical Harley look 
on her face. She actually looks a little bit older than you would typically see in most Harley figures. It works for what this is. It definitely gives her that kind of maniacal look, the grin that she has, the piercing eyes. But they did a really great job on the paint work, the paint apps, on the face itself. It's not quite as white as I would have liked it to be. It's a very, almost kind of grayish white. Not quite as bright white as you would expect the classic Harley to be. Now I mentioned the eyes before, they did a really great job on that. There's those piercing blue eyes and if you look really closely at the iris, amazing detailed paint job on that. Another area a lot of detail was put into is the mouth because they have such a big grin on her. They have all the individual teeth, the painting around the gums, the white on the teeth. It's all done really well. And just a side note, you may notice that I'm using the stand that came with it, which is the standard crotch grabber, which would normally be, as it says, between the crotch holding it up in this curve right here. But I usually put these on the leg. I'll pinch it on the leg like this because it's less intrusive on the shape of the body than having it just right up in the middle like that. Okay, and moving on down to the outfit, they do have her classic neck piece here. It is slightly flexible. It's more of a vinyl material, just like the outfit is. And it is obviously painted because like I said, it did get the paint scratched off right here during shipping. Okay, moving on down to the body. Like I said, one of the most impressive things for this is the upgrade to the TB League seamless body. It gives it a realism that you can't get with a hard plastic body that I mentioned before, and it makes the suit fit better. You know, the suit can be on there tight and it actually has, you know, the flexibility to the skin. So when you squeeze it, it pops back. That doesn't happen with a plastic molded body. Now, speaking of the suit, the suit was done really well. There's not much to say about that as far as the design. It is the classic comic Harley Quinn bodysuit, the red and the black. They went with a straight vinyl. It's not matte on one side and gloss on the other. It's basically the same tone throughout the whole thing as far as the sheen. It's just got that pleather or vinyl look to the whole thing. Okay, and flipping around to the back of the figure, uh, you'll see that there is a fairly large zipper here. It is a functional zipper, so if you did want to change out the outfit, you know, mix it up. Like I said, I'm going to do a Suicide Squad head on this, so if you ever want to change out the outfit as well, it is a functional zip zipper. It does work really well. Seems to be fairly smooth. No struggle on that whatsoever. The only thing is, it is a fairly large zipper and has the big, the big catch on it down here. Not too bad, but it could be a little bit better. And again, as I move her around here, you see the fact that they did use the TB League body. It does give her a nice shape, the realistic shape in the thighs, in the backside, in all the curves in the body, much more realistic and smoother than it ever would be on a plastic jointed body. And moving on down to the arms, speaking of the classic look, these are her classic ruffled cuffs around her wrist. Very good job on this. This is a hard plastic, probably a PVC. Not really much flexibility to that, but that would be obvious so that it holds its shape. And moving on down to her feet, they do have her classic high heel red and black shoes. Did a really good job on that. Have the pointy toes, the cuffs around the top, just like you would see in the comics. They did a really good representation of how that's supposed to look. Okay, now if you're familiar, as most are, with the TB League bodies, they do have many points of articulation. So instead of going over all the articulations separately, which everybody has seen before, I'll go ahead and do some B-roll close-ups, some scanning around with her accessories mounted, different positions I'll put her in, just to give you an idea of what you can actually do with this Harley character. Now before I do that, I do want to mention the limitations. Now you can move a TV League body quite a bit. They're very flexible, but once you put a vinyl bodysuit like this on it, it does limit the movement. You want to be careful with things like this, lifting up the arms. You don't want to lift them up too much further than that because then you start stressing the material. I'm sure the material is slightly flexible, but it's not worth taking a chance on tearing it at the seams. So you don't want to do any major extreme poses with the legs or the arms over the head, things like that. As you can see here, came with the figure, it shows you all the different articulation points. It does have 28 points of articulation. One small additional thing I want to mention that's kind of cool if you don't want to use what I would consider this cheap stand, you can actually use the mallet to help hold her up. If you put it in the down position like this, it is a big enough and heavy enough mallet that she will stand completely on her own really well. You just have to have her legs positioned well enough to hold her up have the hand hold the mallet on the ground like that, and you're all set. That holds her up 
almost as well as this stand was. So it gives you a little more of a dynamic option to pose her instead of just sitting on this thing. You got it, Mr. J. All right, boys, let's deliver the punchline. Give me a man of pasty white makeup, a purple tux, and green hair. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this review of the Harley Quinn 1-6 scale figure from Sideshow Collectibles. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this figure. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you won't miss any upcoming content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Isn't that just the most awesome? I wish everyone could wear it. But Mr. J says only the baddest and craziest out there are good enough. Revving up the Harley! Rum, rum.